Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Sandra Essenam Afen, and as always, I'm here for business. Ghanaian exporters have been urged to be mindful of EU regulations when exporting into the European market. Speaking at the 23rd Trade Fair Business Seminar, Deputy CEO of the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, Alberta Kasim Diwura, is optimistic the country's non-traditional export earnings could double if safety standards are upheld. The Ghana Export Promotion Authority, GEPA, says Ghanaian exporters have no choice but to comply with safety standards to prevent exports from being rejected on the EU market. Figures from the Export Promotion Authority show that Ghana loses millions of dollars on a yearly basis to seized and rejected goods on the EU market. Speaking at the 23rd Trade Fair Business Seminar, Deputy CEO of GEPA, Albert Kasim Diwura, said the authority hopes to double its export earnings from $2.6 billion in 2018 to $5.3 billion by 2021, as efforts to get exporters to comply continues. We have tried very hard to really up our game in the area of the non-traditional export. We deal basically in four areas, four broad areas. We talked about the agri aspect of it, we talked about the manufacturing, we talked about the services, and the industrial arts uh, aspect. And so in the agri sector, uh, in the last two years, we have actually um, developed so much. And so we are looking at in the next um, few years, basically four, five years time, to be able to double our export earnings. Currently, um, 2007, we are looking at 2.6 billion. And so we are saying that from this 2.6 billion, we will double our earnings to at least 5.3 billion come 2021. Joy Business engaged some exporters on this issue. For them, close collaboration with the authority has helped with the level of compliance. There are some kind of subsidies and some kind of tax waivers that we could get if we associate ourselves with GEPA. And I just started, but I, with the few things I've seen and the few meetings we've had with them, we, we know that the future is bright for young businesses like ours. Because we've realized that there's a lot of market for our products. All right, and associating with GEPA will be able to really give us a lot of mileage. Benefit a lot from them. Uh, they have promoted my business in terms of export and import industry. They grow my business as well. I mean, uh, in terms of more information about export. They... But when you are determined to excel in whichever profession you find yourself, you should be ready to build yourself out to meet the challenges that come up. The 23rd Trade Fair Business Seminar forms part of activities by the Ghana International Trade Fair to promote made in Ghana goods both home and abroad. The first LPG bottling plant under the cylinder recirculation policy is expected to begin operation by close of this year. This follows a stakeholder engagement by the National Petroleum Authority for clarity on how to move the policy forward. There's more in the following report. According to the Energy Ministry, the first LPG bottling plant will begin operation by end of the year. Deputy Minister for Energy Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam made this known at the stakeholders' engagement on the cylinder recirculation model. Speaking at the event, the Deputy Minister insisted that the model will be solely owned and maintained by Ghanaians under the local content law. He's asking the public to be ready to adapt to this new policy. We are oblivious of the implications for local content in the development of this industry. And as many of you already know, the local content law stipulates that a venture like this participation. And so those who are afraid that foreigners are going to come and take over the LPG industry, please be reminded that this is CEO for the National Petroleum Authority, Hassan Tampoli, asked for more consultations with the civil society groups and the general public for the smooth execution of the cylinder recirculation policy. We're given what we call the nine commandments to do in respect of the sale and distribution of LPG across the country. Our work was very well cut out for us. Yes, I think I remember one very important group, which is the Parliamentary Select Committee 
on minds and energy. Also present was Second Lady Samira Baumia. She was optimistic that more consultations would share a public interest in the new model. Essel access to clean energy is the way forward to promote sustainable economic and social development. Expanding clean household energy for cooking, heating and lighting is vital for the improvement of health, equitable economic development, environmental protection, and especially gender parity. The cylinder recirculation model is to, among others, ensure safety and increase accessibility to LPG usage. So today is International Women's Day and Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Elsie Awaji, is promising more opportunities in for women in the financial services sector. She made a commitment at the Ring the Bell for Quality, an event spearheaded by the Ghana Stock Exchange as part of the International Women's Day celebration here in Accra. Celebration of the International Women's Day, the Sustainable Stock Exchanges Initiative in collaboration with the Ghana Stock Exchange organized a bell ringing ceremony to raise awareness of the pivotal role the private sector can play to advance gender equality and to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goal 5. Women from various sectors of the economy came together to mark the celebration. Second Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Elsie Awaji, in an address revealed that only a third of SMEs worldwide are owned by women, mostly due to the limited access to funds. She explained that the regulator will do its best to ensure that Ghanaian women have access to funds. Today there is a significant number of women in senior leadership in the bank and management will continue to promote equity and create an environment where women feel supported to give off their utmost best. As regulators we would also ensure that more women get into the industry for the provision of financial services and that women who are end users of these financial services uh, can do that in a safe manner. To conclude, let us all renew our commitment to promoting a more balanced representation of women in every way that we can, wherever we are. Managing Director of the Exchange, Kofi Amwa, urged other stakeholders to use the celebration of International Women's Day to create awareness on women in the financial sector. My key note for this ceremony and going forward is to empower the women, especially in finance and the business sector. Many of the ladies fall eligible as far as investment is concerned. And when that happens, they are the most vulnerable as far as the end result is concerned. I want us to use this opportunity going forward to create more awareness about women in safe investments, very safe investment, so that we don't fall prey to investment opportunities that bring or promise the heavens and then we earn very little from it. The Ring the Bell for Equality is an international celebration in collaboration with UN Global Compact, UN Women, Sustainable Stock Exchanges Initiative, International Finance Corporation, the IFC, World Federation of Exchanges and Women in ETFs. Karen Dodo support for Joy Business. Right, so meanwhile, Standard Chartered Bank Ghana says it has set out some measures to provide good working conditions for women. Mansa Nete is the Chief Executive of Standard Chartered Bank. We at Standard Chartered Bank, for example, we recognize the balance that women need to do because obviously they need to look after the home as well as come to work. So we've introduced several initiatives, like, um, for example, our maternity leave. It's no, not three months, like everybody else, it's six months. We've also introduced what you call flexi working hours to help young women that are balancing, um, you know, the issues with young children. Um, you know, actually determine the hours that they would want to work. Um, we also impact the wider society. So, for example, uh, we have this goal initiative where we help young girls um, develop their skills, empower them, um, we help them with sports to develop their life skills, so we help empower the young girls in society as well. That's all for business for now with me, Sandra Essinam. After you do stay tuned, when I come back in the second half of business, we'll be telling you how much it will cost you for a fertility treatment. Stay tuned.